Yes, I am late on this. Yes, the update did come out a few months ago. So, let's not delay any further, shall we? This is why the Warlord rework is an utter disappointment. Alright, first things first. I should note that industrial investment and local arms production have been buffed. It's now two factories instead of one. Which is... fine. No, seriously, it's fine. Nothing to complain about. I should also note that long-term economic planning now gives a construction speed boost to supply hubs. Which is... whatever. Most of the time we don't even do this focus. But for right now, we're obviously going to do industry, reform, production. Simple. These extra sieves actually allow us to create an intelligence agency. Sure, it isn't the most important thing, but hey, better to have one than not. Okay, I'm sure some of you have noticed this national spirit here. Warlord State. This is a new one. And I... Don't know why Paradox bothered adding this. Sure, we get some buffs to like recruitable pop, attrition and supply, but then we get all the downsides of less PP, less stability, less research speed, less daily command power. Seriously, why was this added? It's not like the Warlords don't already have enough problems to deal with. But luckily, there is still a fairly easy way to get rid of this. Just go over here and ignite. When I did my practice games, it didn't look like this, but that was a few months ago. Whatever. Let's just deploy, get another one ready, wait a day, and walk in. Annoyingly, I don't think that'll be enough, no, but that's okay. And now we have a big decision to make. Which way we're going to go? Chang, Mao, or ourselves? And this has been changed as well. Chang now gives us 5% extra stability, Mao gives us political power, and Opposition gives war support. Not the greatest buff in the world, but to be honest, it's harmless, you know? Just a little bonus, I suppose. A sign-up bonus, actually. But today, I think we're going to go into Opposition. Come on, train up already. Yeah, they've got some extra units now, might be a problem. The race to capitulate the other. There we go. Not the hardest thing in the world, but you could capitulate if you're a little bit too slow. Oh well. And then look at that. Doing the Civil War got rid of all of our negative debuffs. So no Warlord State, no nothing, no bureaucracy troubles. I really thought Paradox would have fixed this by now, because we've talked about this before. Like I showed way back when, doing this allows you to embrace the opium trade for no downside at all. Which I don't think should exist. Like, you shouldn't be able to get minus 40% consumer goods factor for free, you know? Hmm. It's weird that we get the invitation for this. Why does Germany care? Uh... I don't think it's particularly likely we are going to get support from the Soviets today. But they could give us some Lend-Lease. I wish there was just a third option that just says ignore, because I don't want to annoy either of these guys. But this time I actually have to take a stance. Hmm. Let's annoy... Whoever I chose. I think I chose to annoy Germany. And they immediately cancelled my market access. How rude. I love that Paradox nerf Pro Officer Corps for giving too much XP, but we still have Army Reformers giving us an extra 10%. I know not exactly the same, but the point still stands. Oh well, may as well now grab Public Works. I think the Railway buff is new. I mean, it's only 5%, so it doesn't really matter either way, but yeah, it's nice, it's nice. Okay, 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 I get it. Uh, more output, please. Is this the best template I could make? Nope, definitely not. But it's the one I've made. And hey, if nothing else, it at least it has a good amount of soft attack, which is definitely needed for the border conflicts. 
Yeah, sure, some rural militias as Japan moves in. Now, here's something funny. Here's our capital right here, but as you can see, our capital supply hub is here. I think the reason this is the case is because I think Paradox put the Saibe Samas capital in the wrong place. This is where it should be, but this is where it used to be. But they forgot to update the uh, supply hub, which is definitely a, a bit of a mistake on their part. At least we have that 5%. So fast, so quick. Okay, it looks like China is as distracted as they'll ever be. So let's do a border conflict. First up, Shangzi. Well, I'm sure this will be the greatest thing I've ever done. Here we go. 41. That's better than some. Oh, we lost. Shocking. But before we lose our 150 political power, there is actually something we can do about it. Quickly go over there. There we go, we can now stage an incident on shang -Zi. There we go, we get that, and now we lose our political power. But the incident still continues. So, not perfect, but I can live with that. At least I got something. And okay, round two. 100, hand it over, hand it over. Oh, you gave them time to move units in, how coincidental. And coincidentally, we've now gone from 100 to 32. 27. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, you see? Not going particularly well, is it? Sucks to be us. And there we go, another 150 political power. And this time I can't do anything about it. May as well grab Cult of Personality then. I think the war support is new? I mean, it's something if that's so. But hey, at least the extra stability gives us more political power. All of that for 0 0.04 extra political power a day. Yay, personal leadership. This is now our 35 day focus instead of 70. Yay, yeah, who cares. I mean, it's better than nothing, but... Yeah. Hmm. We could proclaim a rival government, but why would we do that? When instead, we can go all the way over here and strengthen Warlord Authority. Because of my shenanigans today, this focus actually does nothing. But hey, it's something. And you know what they say, if at first you don't succeed, try again and again and again and again. Well, come on. Thank you, finally. And sure, let's try again with Mao. But unfortunately, this isn't even our core territory. So I have to garrison it. Yay! And now another favourite thing of mine. A decision. We can either uplift the cavalry or uplift the mountain brigades. And both of these I don't care about. No, seriously. The main problem with this entirely is that you lose it if you do proclaim rival government, the Yan incident, or power struggle. There is no reason to go out of your way really to do these. But oh well, may as well grab this times one boost for mountaineers. It could be something. Right, this will go perfectly, I am sure. 100, I should have won by now, but units will be allowed to be moved in. And I'll go right down to 60. Told ya. Told ya. If you know units are there, surely I should just win. But oh well, let's do that same trick again. Come on, I should just be able to get another border conflict going. And thank you very much. I'm sure this one will go even better than the last one. Right, prove me wrong. 96, 89, come on, it's going my way. Wow, I'm surprised. But seriously, something I've said before still remains true. The consequences for losing a border conflict are still too harsh. Losing 150 political power, while you only get 100 if you win, is ridiculous. If this has to remain as it is, just make it exactly the same. A hundred for both sides. 
There we go. We can now proclaim a rival government. And there we go. I've left Xinjiang mostly alone throughout this game, but no more. No more. Oh boy, time to lose another conflict. Yay. Well, at least we now have democracy to give us 120 political power. It's gone well all the other times, so let's do it again. And grab Executive Yuan. Yeah, I've not pronounced that perfectly, have I? But oh well. It gives us extra political power, which in the context of losing 150 political power... Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. But whatever! Let's try something even more stupid. Might be able to nab Shangzi itself. Probably not, but screw it. Well, this could be funny. But <laughs> even with Shangzi being pounded by Japan, still not enough. And they can just, what do you know, funnel more units in. And to the surprise of no one, another defeat. Shame. I think at this point you get what I'm saying, right? This is why the Warlord rework is a disappointment. They didn't even touch border conflicts, which are the biggest problem with them. Border conflicts still suck. They're inconsistent and a pain in the ass. Like, why wouldn't you just do the thing where you flip ideology, join Japan, and get all of China for cheap in the peace deal? Something like that. And then, of course, you've got the things that they added, like Warlord State, which is just pointless. Why would you want to buff this national spirit? I'm sorry, I just don't see the point of it. It doesn't sync with any of these paths in any real way. It feels like this should be a part of another path where you stay a warlord entirely. But if you play any of these paths intentionally, you'll stop being a warlord around 1939, 1940, 1938 even. And then of course you've got the other exploits that I did that shouldn't exist anymore. Like, I shouldn't be able to get opium trade for free. I shouldn't be able to get rid of warlord state, ineffective bureaucracy and all of that for free. That shouldn't exist. And I know what you're thinking. Okay, Bubbles, we understand, but don't worry. Paradox will come back. They will look at this and change it again. But Paradox's track record on this is not good at all. As many of you will know, Canada got a rework last year. They got a brand new communist tree. This one down here. And it basically hasn't changed since Paradox added it. Sure, they actually made the recruitable population factor work and allowed you to actually access Demar, Newfoundland and Labrador. But that's largely it. The main problem of this tree still remains the same. The fact that support the blue shirts and its 2% recruitable population is better than everything that exists here. But the thing that worries me is the idea that Paradox considers this done it's reworked, it's done, we've done a good job, don't need to look at it again. And that's what I think might happen here, because as far as Paradox is concerned, they've done what they need to do. They've done their little changes, and it's done, never look at it again. And I hope, I really really hope that I'm wrong. I do hope that another rework does come to the Warlords, because they really, really need one. Border conflicts are a mess, and the bonuses they got here are inconsequential. But whatever, until next time everybody, I thank you for watching, do hope you've enjoyed it, and until we meet again, from me, Bubbles Zest. Goodbye.